So the first plugin that we're gonna talk about is from none other than Stupid Raisins. They make great plugins for Final Cut Pro, and the one that I love most and have used most often is their plugin called Slice Pop. Slice Pop is a plugin that allows you to do split screen video editing. Whether it's for narrative, documentary, or your YouTube content, you can do really awesome split screen effects simply. There are certainly some easy ways to do split screens manually, especially if you're only doing two images side by side. It's also really easy to scale up, scale down, and move around your video clips in the cells of the split screens that you're creating. This ease of use has saved me a lot of time on some of my client projects. That's really why I invested in this plugin. I'll admit the price is a little bit steep at $99 for a single plugin, but I really think it's worth the investment, especially if you're doing a lot of client work. Anything we can do to save time on our client work, especially if we're charging flat or project-based rates, is really advantageous. We want to use these shortcuts so that we can expedite the post-production process and get our videos turned into our clients as soon as possible. The team at Stupid Raisins has awesome customer service, and they create really great tutorial videos on their YouTube channel so you're never lost trying to work one of their plugins. I made a video going in-depth on how I use the Slice Pop plugin in my video work. Now, I know I'm sitting in the edit bay, but I'm not going to go in and demo the plugin in this video. You can check out that other video again in the link in the description to get more in-depth understanding of how the Slice Pop plugin works. But that's Stupid Raisins, a really awesome plugin effects and transitions maker. I'll link to their site below so you can get a closer look at all of the awesome things that they're making. So the next two plugins come in from the same plugin maker, one of my favorite companies making plugins for Final Cut Pro, and that's Motion VFX. The plugins that they make at Motion VFX are incredibly useful for any editor who's working in Final Cut, whether you're working in documentary, journalism, YouTube, or film. The two plugins from them that I love the most, I typically use in edits that are faster paced, higher energy, and need a lot of quick cuts and action to keep the viewer engaged. Now the two plugins that I used were both transition plugins. There was the M Transition Glitch plugin and the M Transition Zoom plugin. And I still use them to this day, not a ton on my YouTube channel because I tend to make my videos a little bit more classical and timeless with hard cuts and the occasional cross dissolve. But every once in a while, especially as I'm getting into YouTube shorts, I need stuff that has a little bit more high energy and up tempo, and these transitions are great for that. I used the glitch transition recently with some of the graphics that I created for my YouTube shorts, and it worked out perfectly. So I'll link to both of those transitions in the description below, but definitely check out the Motion VFX website. They have a ton of plugins that cover effects, titles, and transitions, and they're a great way to really take the video content you're creating to the next level. So one more thing I really love about Motion VFX is their M Installer app. The M Installer app allows you to be signed into your account, and it shows you all of the items that you've purchased. It lets you know what the status of these plugins is, and you can download any updates right through the M Installer app, and immediately when you launch Final Cut, you're good to go with that new version. Now, where this is important is, when Final Cut, if you have it set to automatic updates, updates automatically, and all of a sudden some of your transitions aren't working because those transition makers haven't updated their plugins, or if Apple launches a new M1 Mac Mini or M1 MacBook Air and you buy it day one and then are trying to use Final Cut Pro with your plugins from a third-party manufacturer and they aren't working, Motion VFX makes sure those updates get pushed out immediately and you have an easy and simple to use way to do those updates. This is huge for anybody who's editing in Final Cut, especially all of the beginner and intermediate editors that I know are subscribed to this channel. Some of the other plugin manufacturers, you have to uninstall the plugin, go to their website, download it, go through the installation process for each plugin. It can really be time consuming and frustrating. And for me with Motion VFX, I almost never have those problems. Combine the M installer with their excellent support and you're in really good hands with Motion VFX. Their library of products is huge. You can see here, I own six of their plugins just on this account. My other account, I think I have a few more of them, but for the most part, these are the ones I use the most. So for me, Motion VFX is a great resource for anyone that's looking for third-party plugins plugins, effects, transitions, titles, anything that you can use to help bump up the quality of everything you're creating with Final Cut Pro. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to share a story about a really tricky situation I was in with a plugin that I had bought from Motion VFX and their support and customer service team was incredible in how they responded. You'll never believe the lengths that they went to to help me solve my problem. I was blown away and it's made me loyal to Motion VFX ever since. Stick around to the end to hear that story. Now real quick, if these first few plugins have really caught your eye and you're interested in taking a look at them, do me a favor and click the like button down below so that I know that this type of video is something that you wanna see and see more of. And if Final Cut Pro and filmmaking content in general is 
something that really gets you excited, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. I've really grown this community a lot in the last year and I'd love for you to join the channel. If you do subscribe, welcome. I can't wait to show you more about Final Cut Pro and filmmaking. So the fourth plugin I'm gonna recommend for anybody who's editing in Final Cut Pro or filming their own content, that plugin is Neat Video's Reduce Noise version five. Now their noise reduction software to me is pure magic. If you've shot footage at a high ISO in low light conditions and you have a lot of noise in your picture, this noise reduction software can fix it. Now, is it a 100% perfect fix? No. Sometimes there's a little bit of color shifting. If you're already underexposed with what you're shooting, skin tones are gonna have some issues. You can't make the footage look as if it was perfectly exposed, but you can reduce that noise and have something that can make it into a wedding film, a documentary, any of your projects that are more of a run and gun style of shoot. So I shot a clip in the back studio under really low light conditions of a gray card. So I wanted to shoot this so it would be really noisy. So I jacked up the ISO to over like 20 25,000 something ISO and really made sure that this gray card was underexposed. You can see here, I'm gonna change this duration to just one second so we don't have as much resources from the computer to be dedicated to doing this noise reduction. So I'm gonna go over here to my effects panel and pull up the reduce noise plugin. Let's go ahead and type it in here, reduce and reduce noise version five is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select my clip and then double click this to apply it. What you wanna do is you wanna come up here where it says select to open and then click that and it's gonna pull up a, a sort of a pop-up window that lets you interface with the neat video software. And just so you know, this stuff can get really technical. You know, I am, with this stuff, you know, sort of a basic user. I'm not like really into the engineering of all this. I don't really understand what all three of these things mean. What I really do to get this done to my satisfaction is I'll click auto profile and it's gonna scan the image and find an area where the noise is uniform. And that gray card really comes in handy because it was able to use that to find an area that had uniform noise. So now what I'll do that it's got this profile is I'll just click apply and it's gonna do its thing and just watch this image clean up as far as the noise goes and get nice and crisp again. It's gonna take a moment, but it's, I mean, it's literally like a magic trick. Look at that. It's as if the noise was never there. Now my computer is going to take a little while to render this. This is sort of the trade-off with this app is that this stuff is really resource intensive for your computer, especially the CPU. So I would highly recommend applying your reduce noise effect more towards the end of your edit process where you're not actually going through your timeline and doing a lot of edits. Now, some of us were a little obsessive. We like, we have to see the clean version to be able to really get into the creative flow. And I understand that, but with this plugin, you're really gonna wanna resist that. This is so resource intensive that anything that you're doing, applying a grade, uh, making adjustments, scaling up the video, and it triggering a re-render, it's gonna really slow things down. And maybe if you have like a $25,000 Mac Pro, it's not gonna be an issue. And maybe the M1 chips, which this software is optimized for, can handle this a little bit better. I know that on my 2013 Mac Pro, which is just a basic quad-core processor in the D300 graphics cards, this can be really taxing on playback, cause a lot of drop frames and laggy, skippy playback. But just look at this. I mean, it's really remarkable that it was able to get that noise out. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see the difference. So if there's one plugin out of all five of these that you buy, I would highly recommend the Neat Video Reduce Noise plugin. This is a lifesaver for those instances where you're filming a run and gun event. Maybe you go from outdoors to indoors and forget to take your ND filter off and you jack up your ISO thinking, oh my gosh, this is so dark in here. My lenses can't, you know, aren't fast enough to deal with this. It's safe saved my butt a few times and it's also saved some of my clients butts when they send me the footage and there's tons of noise in it. I've been able to use this plugin to really clean up that footage. So the reduced noise plugin from Neat Video, I'll link it down in the description, definitely one you want to check out. All right, so last but not least, we have an awesome plugin through a really cool plugin sort of hub or app store if you will called FX Factory Pro. Now FX Factory doesn't make this plugin, another manufacturer does but FX Factory is essentially an app store for plugins. This is a place where you can check out all kinds of plugins, see what their prices are, what's installed on your computer, any updates that are available, very similar to the M Installer app. And on my computer, you can see I have a number of plugins here. 
and the one that I love the most is Add Motion. Add Motion has been a game changer for me for my Final Cut Pro tutorial videos. I can very easily move from one spot in the frame to another, whether it's zooming in really fast or slow, panning across Final Cut Pro if I'm already scaled up or zoomed in, and it is so incredibly easy to use. Now, I'm not gonna go now into a tutorial for this. There are several on YouTube, and I'll link to a few of those so you can get a closer look at how Add Motion works. I was getting so tired of how time-consuming it was the old way I was doing my tutorials. I needed to speed up my workflow so I could crank out these videos much faster for all of you, and Add Motion covers all of that. That, to me, is a telltale sign that a plugin maker really knows what they're doing. So add motion through FX Factory Pro. I'll link it below in the description along with all the other links to the plugins that I've mentioned. But add motion is a game changer for me for my Final Cut Pro content. So if you're someone that does a lot of educational content, tutorials, YouTube content that is showing people how software works or something on their screen that they need to see, you've got to use add motion. The common denominator for all of these plugins is that they have really upped not only the aesthetic of the videos that I create, but they have streamlined and made more efficient my workflows in post-production, especially as it pertains to Final Cut Pro. But you'll find the Motion VFX family of plugins can be really helpful, especially for you content creators out there that really want to spice up your videos and add a lot of flash to them without it taking up all of your time. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions about these plugins, or if you have some plugins that you really love and that you think I need to know about, let me know because I am always looking for the latest, greatest plugins that help save a ton of time when editing in Final Cut Pro. Now, one last thing I want to talk about with Motion VFX. I had purchased a transition mega pack maybe last year. I was doing a client edit for a local agency and they wanted the edit to have a lot of energy, but they wanted like these color blocking transitions that matched the branding that was going along with this video. Instead of sending all the stuff off to an After Effects artist to make custom, which I think would have been a really cool way to go, we didn't have the budget for that. And when I came across Motion VFX's mega transition pack, I knew it was the perfect fit. There were two transitions in there that I wanted to use, one that sort of swirled the images around and another one that had like these color wipes that would push one frame of video out while it pulled another one in. So that transition with the color blocking would only move from right to left and I really wanted to be able to go from down to up up to down and left to right. So I contacted Motion VFX support and told them what I was hoping to be able to do with that one transition in this huge pack of like a hundred transitions. And within a few hours, they had actually updated that transition to be able to move it from left to right, right to left, down to up and up to down. I was blown away by this. I could not believe that they had dedicated the time in that moment to not only process what I was asking for, but to have one of their visual effects artists go in and update the app, roll it out, and make it so I could download and install the update. That type of support, that type of customer service, you don't get that with third-party applications for your video editing software. So Motion VFX, a big thank you to you for having done that. That's not a story I've shared anywhere, and I'm really glad I could share it on my YouTube channel with all of you. So those are my five favorite plugins. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Yeah.